Hi, glad you could join me. I'm in the book of Exodus today, Exodus chapter 32. It's a story that most of us are probably familiar with. You remember the, the, the great situation where Israel is delivered because of the uh, oppression of the Egyptians. They were delivered through the Red Sea and they came out and uh, the, the uh, Egyptian army was destroyed in that particular uh, event. And you remember then that they wandered for a little bit until they came to Mount Sinai. Now, m even though the Bible doesn't give us a clear understanding always of the time frame, most of us would believe and recognize that they went from the Red Sea to Mount Sinai in the space of about three months. This particular incident is less than, less than six months, clearly, after the, um, after the Red Sea incident. And at that particular time, when they got to Mount Sinai, of course you remember that Moses was given the Ten Commandments, and he went up on the mountain, and uh, he was with God for 40 days and 40 nights. There was an appearance at the, uh, uh, the top of the mountain of fire, and then Moses had gone into that, and he was listening to the voice of God as he gave him the law. And, and this particular, these people were, stand, were sitting at the base of the mountain for that period of time. Now, I believe that it is a literal 40 days and 40 nights. There are some who simply say it was a long time. I, I won't uh, debate that. It's not something that I consider to be so vitally important that uh, I'm going to lose fellowship over that. But I believe it was a literal 40 days and 40 nights. Now stop and think about that. That's a little over a month, almost a month and a half. And these people had been, uh, here was their leader. Here was the man that that they had put their trust in that had led them through the dead uh, excuse me the red sea and he had and through his leadership the egyptian army was destroyed and so they were they were uh, glad to follow him but now he's gone he went up into that mountain and it appears that the fire had consumed him and so they came to Aaron who was the second in command if you will and they said, we don't know what happened to Moses. Moses is gone, and we need to, we need to go back to Egypt because we don't know what we're doing right here, and it's hard just to sit here and do nothing for these, this particular period of time. And so they told Aaron to build a calf, and of course, you know what happened. They began worshiping that golden calf, and they made this idol and said, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. And they attributed to this idol all of the power and the might and the glory that should have gone to the God of Israel. And so Moses comes back down from the mountain, having realized that these people had corrupted themselves. And he comes back down and he destroys that idol and uh, the, the whole situation shows the, the sinfulness of the people and the, the ways in which people excuse their sin before God. Now, it's important for us to recognize that there may have been some legitimacy on the part of the people. They didn't know how long Moses was going to be gone. They saw that fire there, and they knew that they couldn't live inside that. They knew that, that he was probably gone forever, and so they needed some kind of leadership, some kind of stability, but it was just a few months before that they saw the power of the living God. And so while we may justify what they did in some ways, the reality is that they needed to stop and remember that the God that brought them through the Red Sea, the same God that had performed all of the miracles during the, uh, during the time of the plagues, that's the God 
that really was the leader, and they needed to trust him. Now, some of them did, to be sure, but there were enough of them that turned away that it caused sin to run rampant in the whole of the nation, and so judgment had to happen. Now, I want us to understand that we tend to forget quickly, just like they did. We tend to be people who, after there is some kind of, of clear evidence of God's deliverance for us, his faithfulness to us, we turn around and we say, what have you done for me today? Now that's, that's the sad reality, and that's part of who we are as people, as, as human beings. But what he wants us to do is to continually remember who he is. It takes an effort for us to do that. It's not something that happens automatically. So I encourage you. I, 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 I pray and plead with you. Keep your heart and mind in the scripture in places where you're able to keep your thoughts on him. And if you'll do that, it will go a long way toward preventing the same kind of error that happened to these ancient Israelites. Father, we ask you to help us to keep you at the center, to fix our minds upon you, to think on the things that are pure, right, and lovely. So draw near to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Great to see you today.